In this Friday morning, we've loads more coming your way. We've Ronan Nagara joining us from Brisbane, and we've Alan Quinlan in the studio as well to uh, pick through a few interesting stories in the world of rugby. Uh, I'll be at a down week in the Six Nations uh, this week. Paddy O'Rourke as well is going to talk to us very shortly about the role, ever-evolving role, of the goalkeeper in the GEA. So that's uh, coming your way in just a few moments' time before all of that. Michael Meehan uh, and Michael Quirk joined Nathan on last night's Off the Ball and I gave his talk a uh, take even on Kerry's superstar forwards. Yeah, I've I've really enjoyed everything that I've seen of him so far. Yeah, this year he's just he's just he's one of these players that come along, you know, not too often, and and they're the type of player that that just everyone in the country, you know, will will watch and will will ooh and ah over. And you know, there's going to be young lads in every quarter of the of the country, you know, watching up and wanting to be Sean O'Shea this summer and for summers to come. And I think that's something very special. Um, and it's just it's the all around package, you know. I, he, he did something beautiful against Dublin in the first half the last day. It ended up going wide, but it was a dummy solo uh, once, dummy solo twice, you know, taking two players out of it and then getting a shot away. And it's just narrowly missing from the good to 40 yards in the first half. And, you know, he, he, he just he can score heavily and definitely what, what, what Mike referred to, you know, the, the amount of tackles and dispossessions I've seen him involved in is it's just great to see. You love seeing a flair player. But, you know, when you can back it up with the, the, the team ethic and the really, uh, real hard work and, and just desire to kind of, you know, put the team first, um, it, it, sound, it looks and it sounds like he's an all-rounder. And, you know, the thoughts of him and one David Clifford um, forming a partnership for the next, you know, 10 years or whatever, it, it's, quite, it's quite daunting for maybe a lot of full-back lines out there. And the uh, response from the Kerry Mafia is, Yara, 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 Yara. Yeah, it's only February. Well, yeah. March actually today. How did you know? Exactly. That's exactly what our WhatsApp group is. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we say. Um, I, does it make you a bit? Do palms get a bit sweaty when you hear like legendary players of the game speak about Kerry, up and coming Kerry players in such high tones early in the year. Well, it's, it's so early in the year. Nervous though, does it? Like, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But this is a guy who's been playing Sigerson Cup football as well, and he's absolutely flying at the moment. So I've got no doubt that he is going to become an exceptionally good footballer and he probably is close to that already but uh, let's just let's just let's just wait until yeah, later Michael, on this year keep a lid in it for now plenty more football to be played the ground isn't hard yet yeah like I know I know he's like we've just come off the back of actually beating Michael's own Galway without David Clifford Paul Ganey and James Dunhu in the starting team but mm. no big deal right Paddy O'Rourke I believe is uh, on the line good morning to you Paddy Morning, guys. How are you doing? Good. We wanted to... A few things we wanted to touch on with you this morning um, in relation to the rise and rise of uh, the GA goalkeeper is certainly a huge part of this. And um, We might start with... Uh, we want to talk about Niall Morgan. We want to talk about uh, Rob Henley versus David Clark as well. But uh, we might start before all of that with maybe the most talked about goalkeeper in the country at the minute, Evan Comerford. Uh, and whether or not, Paddy, in your opinion, Dublin, if... Um, Cluxton's obviously back in the uh, mix now but if uh, for whatever reason Cluxton was unavailable Dublin could and would go ahead and win the All-Ireland with Evan Comerford in goal Yeah well I was in at the game against Mayo there on Saturday evening in Croker and you know I seen a tweet afterwards from Eamon Fitzmaurice and I couldn't agree more He he's beginning to look this year like a fella who's about to make the number one jersey his own rather than just a fella who's Stepping in for a couple of games while Cluxton is hurt, um, he he looked very composed and calm in Croker on on Saturday night, and obviously saved a penalty as well. Um, he he's really he, he's stepping up to the mark now and seems to have slotted in and, and looks comfortable behind that backline. What is it about Evan Comerford? People will have seen him obviously a little bit of him in the league. Um, what is it about him as a goalkeeper that you're watching that stands out for you? On a team like like Dublin, he just has to specifically think about just his individual role you know you don't see him getting involved in coming off his line to join the attack or, or to, to be a spare man at the back to, to take a ball and, and break out of the fence you know he just gets the ball hand passes it to the closest the cornerback fullback that's his job done then he's back in goals he's constantly making sure that everything around him is perfect. He's balls at, at either side of the post. He has his kick and tee ready to go. As soon as the ball goes dead, you know they have a. I think it's a, a six second turnaround is what Dublin want. He, he's ready to rock a, a, and gets the the kick outs gone away. His kick outs the last day were were a platform for Dublin against Mayo. Ball on the tee and he he was pinging balls 45, 50 yards at his ease, just into space, into pocket of space, 
and the Dubs were, were on the attack straight away. Yeah, like while you're right in saying that he probably wants to push off the idea that he's an understudy to Stephen Cluxton, there is still hallmarks that he's modelled himself on Stephen Cluxton. Is that correct to say? Yeah, the, he looks a carbon copy of of Stephen. Obviously, the the two two boys are left footed. You know, they're they're small in stature, but they're great shot stoppers. They look comfortable with ball in hand as well, and and uh, they they look like they're they're natural goalkeepers. You know, he I seen him playing for the. The Dublin Miners back in Navan when um, Mead beat them there maybe about three years ago now, and like that you could see that there was there was people talking him up already at about eighteen. You know that the supporters in Dublin had heard of him coming along and saying we've we've clucks the number two coming along here now in the next couple of years, and they they've really you know that they've moulded him into that position of being Stephen Cluxton's understudy, and he, he stepped up to it, and I think now this this could be his breakthrough year with. You know, whenever Stephen Cluxon does hang up the gloves, he'll uh, he'll just fit straight in. One of the things that has been touched on over the last week or so is like the the Croke Park element and all of that. You'd have played there as a goalkeeper yourself. Like, how vastly different is it? Because obviously you got wider sidelines and all of that. Because it seemed that the Evan Comer for performance from Tralee was vastly different to the one we saw in Croke Park last week. Yeah, the, the pitch is bigger. You've you've more space. You know, when you go to a provincial ground, if you're playing a Mead and Navan, or if you're you know, if you're playing Mayo down in Castlebar, you're trying to hit the man in Dublin, in Croker, you're just hitting space because you know that you have the, the comfort line of, of there being a little bit more space around where you want to place your kickouts. And I think it, it's, it certainly is a home comfort because when, when the Dubs play there, they know exactly how far they need to kick the ball, you know, at what, what pace, you know, at, at, a, at what level of strength to, to just pop balls into that space and, and the runners are going to be there. Uh, we wanted to talk about Niall Morgan uh, quickly because the idea of him as, as a fly goalkeeper, it's not, nothing new in terms of the GA as a whole this year, but it's just happening more often, isn't it? And, and Niall Morgan getting scores from play in two consecutive games and all of that sort of thing. Is this a trend that's going to keep on going, Paddy, or have we reached peak fly goalkeeper, I suppose? Like, could you ever see somebody like Dublin uh, kind of transforming Cluxton or perhaps Comerford even into uh, a fly goalkeeper at some point eventually? No, absolutely not. I, I think just the way that Tyrone set up in in them games against Mayo, Mayo had nearly everybody back behind the ball. They were protecting a lead. The play had gone static. There was nobody within the Tyrone half. Niall Morgan comes up to to halfway just to to be an added player. Just to, they were it was kind of like a game of of possession that you have in training, and there was just. There was nothing for him to do at home, so he, he just tipped on up the field. And the saying down in Roscommon, Roscommon had retreated inside their own, basically inside their own 45-yard line, and he joined the attack. Now, I, I'd never see I'd never see Dublin going down that route. I don't think they'll ever need to. And I think there's only a few goalkeepers in the country that can can add to, to that fly keeper role. I know Niall plays out the field with the club, so he's more than comfortable on the ball and, and with ball in hand. Yeah, you definitely feel it because you look at it and you think, uh, Jesus, every country should be at this. And then you realise that actually how many keepers in the country actually have the capacity to kick it with such assuredness and calmness uh, as Morgan did that day. So, um, you know, I'd love to see players doing it like not with the last kick of the game, that actually in the first minute that um, our coaching team have enough faith in the manager who has that capacity to push them up in the first minute and say, listen, if the opportunity comes, go for it. Do you see that sort of thing happening a bit more with keepers that are capable of it? Not, not really. I think in when, when the game starts, you know, everybody has that extra, extra bit of energy. The lads are buzzing. You know, if if a team does get a turnover and the goalkeeper's off his line, like the Allard and Intermediate Club semi final there in Navan, um, was it Saint Anas from from up in Belfast against the the team from Spiddle in Galway when when Manus Bracknock got got overturned? If you can get lobbed early on in the game. I think that uh, it, it gives the opposition team a platform then to, to go and attack and certainly in with the high stakes going forward from here on in the league and in the championship, I don't think teams will, will be pushing up and, and pushing a fly keeper up early on in the game. It's all right if you are chasing lead, a team has retreated and it's into the last couple of minutes that a goalkeeper can join the attack and add an extra man, so to speak, an extra body maybe to break the line. But no, I wouldn't be encouraging it early on in, in the game anyway. There's a real battle for the Mayo number one jersey as well. Who's a better goalkeeper in your opinion, Paddy? Rob Henley or David Clark? 
I would have always said Rob Henley. Um, even before and after what, what maybe happened in the All-Ireland final, um, I, I, I just see him being an all-round better goalkeeper, ball in hand, kickouts, um, shot stopping and that. Now, it just, it's just unfortunate for the, for the county down there that they have two high-quality goalkeepers and, and they have to try and pick and choose to maybe keep both of them on the panel. But, um, yeah, I, I would have always gone with Henley over Clark. Yeah, because it seems like the general consensus seems to be marginally the other way around. But you're seeing a bit more from Henley that impresses you. Yeah, I think he's always been a very good shot stopper. Now, people will 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 criticise him for for the mistake he made against Dublin, and and maybe they might go back to the All Ireland final in 2013, high ball in, and, and Bernard Brogan flicked the goal into the Hill 16 end. But you know, I. I just never, I was never just that confident looking at David Clark thinking, yeah, he's, he's going to uh, make the number one jersey his own for, for 10, 15 years. I, I've always been kind of thinking uh, Henley was, was a better goalkeeper. I, I would have always had him in first choice anyway. What's the most important attribute? I mean, for these all conversations we're having, there's so many different elements to goalkeepers' role now between kickouts and free taking and shot stopping. What are the most important? What's the big emphasis for uh, inter county goalkeepers now in terms of your capacity? I mean, I'm presuming that the sort of 10, 15 years ago and, and beyond capacity to stop a shot is not almost even the primary focus anymore. No, it. It seems to be there's so much emphasis put on team meetings and county meetings on your your kick out percentages one your possession uh, ball possession one and you know you're coming in at half time into a dressing room and a fellow will come over with an iPad and he'll he'll say right we've had eight kick outs in the first half we've won six of them into this position we've lost one over here and we've lost one down the middle you're going to have to you know go go to the corner back or, or you know, this pocket of space out to your left is the one that you've had most joy with. It. The the kickouts has really put more emphasis on the goalkeeper, even training drills and and what lads are focusing on now has completely changed. Like back back when I started out, maybe in about 2008, on the mid squad, you were looking around at other keepers, and it was a case of you had two midfielders and you had two half forwards who would compete for their kickouts. And it was try and get the ball out there as far away from your own goals as possible. Let them compete for it in the air. And then you were, had to be a good shot stopper and decent under the high ball. So it's gone completely more kick-out base where you have a lad who's, who's able to, to pick out passes there, 30, 40 yards, pop balls into space, get, it, get a quick kick out away to a corner back and just maintain possession. You know, It's gone nine-tenths of the law now is possession in football and the higher your stats are as a goalkeeper, it seems now that the better you're playing. Is that? I mean, is it too simplistic? Finally, to say that that's just the Stephen Cluxon factor. Was it something that was going to happen anyway, or was it down to him? I th- think mainly it was down to him. A lot of uh, intercounty coaches tried to to follow his example and and to see how, how beneficial it is for a team and how much of an influence on the game the goalkeeper can have by, you know, if you can get a, a quick kick out of the way to a wing back, let's say, who's free and he can make 20 or 30 yards of, you know, an, an advantage or, or up the field. That's as good as kicking the ball 70 yards and a midfielder catching it, you know, in a, in a crowd of players. You know, before the mark came in, there was really, really no advantage to driving it out to a midfielder who was going to catch it and be swamped by four or five lads in around the middle. Whereas if you can get the ball out quick, you're on the attack. You've started a platform there to, to build an attack up the wing, or or, or so so be it. Paddy, thanks, William. Take it easy. Cheers, lads. Have thanks a good weekend. Paddy O'Rourke, former Meath goalkeeper, on the line there uh, to discuss all that stuff to do with uh, goalkeepers, which is extremely interesting topic at the minute. One comment that's come to us here on YouTube from Fellaini18: Kerry Snobbery stinks of Owen. I kind of think Owens thinks of Kerry Snobbery might be the more appropriate thing, but bear with Fellaini 18 for the second. Uh, he might be forgetting that Kerry lost twice to Galway last year. Galway also missing Kerr Finn players, Comer and Conroy. Rather, a Dublin five in a row than that crowd winning. That's <laughs> harsh stuff. Well, it's certainly not going to be Galway that's going to stop them anyway. <laughs> Oof, that's more Kerry Snobbery's thinking of Owen right there. No, it's just a fact. Was the in Croke Park last year when Dublin in third gear absolutely coasted into an All-Ireland final?